Welcome to Bed Crime Stories Podcast. I'm your host, T. Hi guys, hope you're having a wonderful day. If you're new here, a warm welcome. Thank you for checking out my channel. All I ask is that after listening to and or watching the video, if you find you enjoyed it or learned something, smash that like button and consider subscribing. Now let's dig in. You send your kid off to college, a prestigious college no less, Texas A&M University in Corpus Christi, and suddenly one night, rather one early morning, your child goes missing. That's not supposed to happen. 21-year-old student Caleb Harris went missing on March 4th. Now, he wasn't living in the dorms like a lot of students these days. He was living in an apartment complex near the campus. According to the Corpus Christi Police Department, Caleb spent the evening of Sunday, March 3rd inside his off-campus apartment with his two roommates and a mutual friend. Caleb and his friend played video games online for more than an hour with another former high school classmate in Colorado. So Sunday turns into Monday, and at around 12.56 a.m. on March 4th, a doorbell camera at a nearby apartment captures Caleb, his friend, and one of his roommates in the parking lot playing with a little puppy belonging to the girlfriend of one of Caleb's roommates. After they play with the puppy, they return to the apartment. Shortly after that, the mutual friend leaves and Caleb's roommate stated he was going to bed. Caleb replies that he's going to stay up because he wants to order some snacks from Uber Eats for his school lunch later that day. Then, at around 2.44 a.m., Caleb shared a Snapchat video with his younger sister. It shows Caleb walking the puppy through what appears to be the apartment complex parking lot. Fast forward 17 minutes to 3.03 a.m. Caleb sends another Snapchat photo to a high school friend in San Antonio. The image, strangely, depicts a small bridge over a drainage ditch within a few hundred feet of Caleb's apartment complex. Then, at around 3.12 a.m., Caleb's cell phone last shared location data with the nearest cell phone tower. At around 3.20 a.m., the Uber Eats driver delivered Caleb's order to the apartment, leaving it outside near the front door per the order request. The following day, Caleb's roommate discovers the Uber Eats order outside the front door. He also notices that Caleb Caleb's truck is parked in front of the apartment. Caleb's wallet and keys are left behind in the apartment, and all that is missing appear to be Caleb and his cell phone. Now, Caleb's roommates describe him as a homebody and a creature of habit. The initial search of the apartment complex and the immediate area surrounding it revealed no signs of struggle or violence, nor any indication of a hit-and-run accident on the roads nearby. Caleb is 5 feet 11 inches tall and he weighs 180 pounds. He's got brown hair and brown eyes, and the family is offering $50,000. A phone line has been set up to monitor tips. That number is is 361-826-2950. In addition, the Corpus Christi Police Department is urging anyone with info to help investigators find Calvin to call 361-886-2840 or 361-886-2600. The Uber Eats order seems odd to me, but you know, I'm not of that generation, so is it normal to order Uber Eats for your lunch the next day? Wouldn't you want it to be all nice and fresh and warm or whatever? Did someone place that order to make it look like he placed the order? The other strange thing is the photo of a bridge over an irrigation ditch. A photo of that at night doesn't sound like all that artistic or interesting. Could this be sort of an Abby and Libby situation? 
Was Caleb trying to document something? Was he sending out a signal trying to say, look here, this is where the bad guys are? Did he see something that he wasn't supposed to see? Did he see people doing something illegal? Was he in the wrong place at the wrong time? Corpus Christi Assistant Police Chief Todd Green, who is overseeing the search efforts, told 3 News that the police have interviewed Harris's roommates, friends, and family. They've also poured over hours of surveillance camera footage, and they're saying that the investigation is now moving from a search effort to detective work behind the scenes. So the cops are now looking at digital data, forensic computer exams, and more. So the apartment where Caleb lives is called the Cottages on Ennis Jocelyn Road near South Padre Island Drive. And again, Calvin has two roommates and he also had a mutual friend who was over at the apartment playing video games with him. Now the police do have the ring doorbell camera footage from the nearby apartment and it does show Calvin, his friend, and one of Calvin's roommates playing with the puppy in the apartment complex parking lot. The police have that video and they say that nothing appears to be out of the ordinary. When 3 News spoke to Caleb's father, Randy Harris, he said that he is 100% confident in the Corpus Christi Police Department. He feels like they're doing everything they can to find his son. The police are saying that they have ruled out the roommates. They've crossed them off the suspect list. Now, the police are saying that the last time Caleb's cell phone pinged. He was right by his apartment complex. According to the police, they're saying that when that phone last pinged, it was probably right in the complex or out on the street in front of the complex. The police are saying that they went to more than 50 businesses and private residences, and they received 27 different sources of video from the morning that Caleb went missing. The problem is it was very far that night. Detectives have also identified and interviewed the Uber Eats driver who delivered Caleb's order that night. The 31-year-old woman told detectives that she was driving alone that night and did not see Caleb or anyone else at or near the apartment complex. And detectives confirmed that she was alone by reviewing surveillance video from the convenience store where she picked up Caleb's order. She also has been eliminated as a suspect in Caleb's disappearance. So what happened to Caleb? People don't just go poof and disappear into the ether. They're either running away somewhere, which I don't suspect because he didn't take his phone or his wallet, or somebody grabbed him. A lot of people are concerned about the puppy. It sounds like Caleb returned the puppy to the apartment before he went outside again for the Uber Eats. I don't think he would have ordered Uber Eats and then headed off somewhere to meet up with somebody, some girl or another friend. I think he went out to wait for the Uber Eats. Clearly, he was pretty much wide awake. He was out walking, he was doing things, he was very active. So did people grab him for trafficking purposes? Is there some sort of serialist in the neighborhood? looking for young men. I hate to say that, but you don't just go missing. Something intervenes to make you go missing, especially when you don't leave with your wallet or your car. My first instinct when I was reading about this case was to suspect the roommates. I don't know, I've seen way too many cases where there's like some sort of love triangle and someone gets jealous and they want to get rid of the guy or the gal but the cops are saying they ruled out the roommates. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you next time on Bed Crime Stories. To the disappearance of Texas A&M Corpus Christi student, Caleb Harris. Corpus Christi police say they are still very active in the search, sharing the latest on their continued efforts to find the 21 year old student as we approach a month since he seemingly vanished without a trace back on March 4th.
And tonight our Bill Church will sat in a one on one interview with Assistant Police Chief Todd Green. Police also addressing misinformation as well as allegations that have been circulating online. And Leslie, police say they can rule out those roommates and they can also those friends that Caleb was communicating with that night over social media and also ruling out the Uber driver that made the food delivery. Police telling us they've investigated those individuals very thoroughly. This as investigators are now heavily focusing on behind the scenes work that includes looking at digital data they've collected. Do you still need people in the community, of course, if they might have any doorbell camera, ring camera, blink cameras, anything like that? How much does that help out in an investigation like this? Oh, it's uh, tremendous. I'm Unfortunately, the night he disappeared, it was extremely foggy. And the video that we've collected already, gone to over 50 businesses and uh, different uh, residents, private residences, and co uh, collected video. Of the 50 that we've been to, we've collected, uh, I believe, 27 different sources of video. Um, the, the problem with that is a lot of it is very difficult to, um, to see because it was so foggy that night but it is valuable to us, we're using it. There are a few other uh, missing person cases as well that, that are still open, um, but when, when you have cases like this or when you have an investigation like this, do you add more uh, people to focus on that investigation or is it a department-wide type of deal where everyone kind of gets involved? Uh, well, in this particular situation, the, the circumstances are so were so unusual. Immediately, we started getting a lot of people involved. Uh, we uh, had detectives out there. We recruited um, uh, Texas Search and Rescue. We recruited, uh, I say recruited them, we reached out to them to assist in the search. We did a massive search around the immediate area. Um, we brought in our uh, forensic um, computer examiners. Uh, to download his laptop. Uh, we brought in analysts, crime analysts, to go out and start searching for um, surveillance video, for ring camera video and, and, and whatnot. I know there's, a, there's been several in social media suggesting that uh, we've had several missing persons of the same age and males and that, you know, there, there appears to be, you know, maybe some kind of conspiracy or something going on. Early on in the investigation, we went back and reviewed all of the uh, missing persons reports for the last three years to look to see if there was any connection. Now there are some similarities, and there's some similarities. Caleb was an avid fisherman, avid hunter. Um, we've had a couple other missing persons where it's similar. They're avid fishermen or avid hunters. But there was nothing that we found that showed any type of a connection. We spoke with Caleb's dad and he said he was 100% confident in CCPD mm -hmm. that you guys are doing everything you can to find his son. Are you confident in the department and the work you guys are doing to find Caleb? I'm very confident. Uh, I've, I've been amazed by the, the, the work that's being done behind the scenes. We have some very talented people they're not out on, you know, driving around in a patrol car. They're behind the scenes going through computer data, uh, issuing search warrants for uh, digital information, uh, subpoenas, um, all those types of things. And it's not a glamorous job.